Hey there Wargamers, I just wanted to give you an update on what I'm doing and some of the stuff I've been doing recently. So, um, right now I'm working on a lovely Legion commission. Uh, it is also sort of a joint commission with some Kador stuff right now. And uh, just working on getting that tied up as well as working on some tutorials for you Vault members out there. Um, so... Uh, what I'm working on right now is, I think I mentioned this a while back, and it feels like I've been working on this one like forever, because I, I stopped in the middle of it to do the uh, airbrush tutorial on, uh, not the air, airbrush tutorial, but the um, orc bomber tutorial. So, I uh, this one's actually, start to end is going to be kind of long, but it's not like it's been taking me that long. So, uh, And this last weekend, which was Labor Day weekend, I was in Atlanta all weekend, so I didn't really get a chance to work on it then. But uh, I did get some really cool pictures and have a lot of fun. And uh, it was Dragon Con, by, by the way. And for those of you who don't know what Dragon Con is, it is... It's kind of like Comic-Con. It's sci-fi fantasy comic book-y. But uh, it focuses more on like television and movies uh, in the science fiction fantasy genre. There's a lot of costumes, a lot of parties, um, a lot of celebrities... So, uh, I had a lot of fun, got to meet some celebrities, got to visit some panels where celebra celebrities were talking. Um, let's see, uh, I'll try and throw some pictures up on the screen if I've got any from the convention um, as I'm talking about some of these things. Um, let's see, what panels did I go to? Oh, first one I went to was the True Blood panel, and that was pretty cool. Um, the... Uh, actors who play the characters in the show, uh, Lafayette, uh, Arlene, Alcide, and Sam. Sam. Um, I think that was it. It was just four. Uh, but it was a really fun panel. Lots of uh, cool little anecdote stuff. I think I may have some footage from that panel. I'll see if I can dig up. Yeah, it was really hard to see the stage. I was kind of far back, so my footage was not uh, all that great. I will warn you. So if they're... yeah. Um, actually, I probably won't put anything up there because it was, I don't think I got anything that was really useful. Anyway, uh, the next one I went to was the Doc Hammer and uh, Jackson Public um, panel, which was pretty awesome. Um, for those of you who don't know who those are, uh, you may know their TV show on uh, Cartoon Network, uh, Venture Brothers. They are the creators and writer uh creator and writer and um, most of the voice acting that goes into that show uh, are just those two guys. Now they had one of the other voice actors on there with them. Um, he does the voice of Dr. Venture uh, and a couple other uh, characters whose names I can't remember at the moment, but he also does a lot of the like background, like random guy who says something extra kind of thing. Um, that one was cool, um, mostly because you, you normally have like a you know, I'm sitting in my chair here, and, you know, 50, 100 feet away is the, the panel, and they're just sitting up on stage uh, with, um, you know, big spotlights on them, and then up to the right or left uh, of the stage, there's um, a screen, and they've got a camera guy so that people way, way, way back in the back can see what's going on on the stage. Um, well, the Doc Hammer and Jackson Public one was really cool because they actually, instead of sitting up on stage and then having people in the audience ask questions, like walk into the aisles and go up to one of the microphone stations and ask a question, um, they actually took the, the microphone out like a wireless mic and just ran out into the audience and would like wade down into each of the rows and let them ask the question. You know, it's them holding the microphone for them. So, uh, it's pretty cool. You got a lot of, um crowd celebrity interaction uh and it's it's funny they're actually stationed like they're their headquarters for venture brothers and most of the the late night uh, adult swim cartoons on cartoon network are on uh william street as the name of the company william street um and they are in atlanta and actually right around the corner from the hotel i was staying in on 14th street um um yeah, it was like walking distance. I could have walked there. Not that I would have gotten to see anything or, um, you know, do anything there. But it's kind of cool. They had some cool murals up on the, the walls and stuff around. Um, I don't know if we got pictures of those. I'll see if I can find some. I might have to scour the web for them. Um, 
let's see. What else? What else? What? Oh, uh, Battlestar. Only two Battlestar panel. Um, I know that show's not on anymore, but uh, it's really cool to see some of the actors. Uh, I know they've mostly moved on to other roles and other TV shows and movies now, but uh, it was kind of neat to see them. The conversation was really heavy with them. It was very cool uh, to see all these other panels where, you know, it's just lots of lighthearted joking and, you know, funny things that happen on set and goofy mishaps and things. Uh, but this one started out really, um, a really good conversation. The, the questions uh, were some very thought-provoking ones. Um, like stuff about um, the overarching themes of TV show and what what the actors thought were the most enduring themes and uh, you know what was what would the legacy of this show be um, and so they it, it was a lot of politics and religion and really uh, deep thought right at the beginning uh, they did end up making fun of Edward James almost a little bit uh, who was not there. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they did end up telling some funny anecdotes and stories about things on set. But, yeah, uh, generally it was a, a fun time. Got to see some celebrities, actually some a little bit more up close. I actually saw um, uh, my wife and I were, were doing a group Venture Brothers costume uh, group thing uh, one evening. I think it was uh, Sunday night, uh, right at the end of the convention. And... Um, into the the hotel lobby where we're standing in this you know big group there were tons and tons of people around in in costumes and all kinds of stuff and we were having a good time and then she looks across the room and we've been spotting cool costumes and neat t-shirts all day and she points at somebody and says look and uh i look at his t-shirt and i read it and i, I can't for the life of me figure out you know what it is it, it, it was a, okay sure it just wasn't she had this look on her face like oh my gosh it's the best thing ever um, and uh, it turns out she was pointing at the t-shirt he was wearing. She was pointing at him, and it was Eddie McClintock, who plays um, one of the main characters on Warehouse 13. It's a current show on sci-fi that uh, my wife and I watch, and it was just really cool. I walked up to him in full uh, Venture Brothers. Uh, I was a, a monarch henchman um, and uh, walked up and said, can I get a picture with you? And he said, absolutely, he's a really cool guy. I mean, I, I he, he seems to actually be kind of like his character in the show, which is like, uh, you know, really nice, funny, goofy kind of guy. Um, and he asked us about our costumes and stuff and, you know, what show we were, we were um, sort of representing there. So I told him a little bit about Venture Brothers. He recognized the name, at least. He, he hadn't watched a lot of it, but uh, uh, it was cool to take a picture. I'm sure... Um, some of you are familiar with Warehouse 13. Uh, and speaking of which, we actually ran into Aaron Ashmore like a few minutes later, pretty much the same spot. I guess they must have been coming from the same place. Maybe they were doing a panel that evening. But um, he plays one of the other characters on there, uh, one of the new ones from last season, uh, is Agent Jinx. And um, he also played Jimmy Olsen in the... Um, what's it? Um, and Smallville. I keep I kept wanting to say something Superman. I mean, it is Superman, but uh, S names kept running into my head, and it was always Superman. Um, but that was cool. Um, it was kind of funny though. Uh, I got a good laugh out of this later. Like I, I really I wasn't even thinking about it in the moment. Um, you know, our, our troop of people in Monarch henchman outfits and Venture Brother stuff was. Um, we were walking around in this giant lobby area. There are tons of people around, kind of having this big po costume party, and lots of people were asking us for a picture. They wanted to take a picture of our, our group. And uh, when we ran into Aaron Ashmore, uh, my wife and I took a picture with him, and then there was a group of people standing around with more cameras, and uh, you know we started to get out of the way. Um, to uh, to let that because I figured you know they want to take a picture with Aaron Ashmore he's famous he's been in some stuff and uh, his twin brother was Iceman in X Men some might not have realized it was him and not his brother um, anyway uh, just trying to get out of the way <laughs> and uh, the masses corrected us and said no 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 we don't we don't want that guy over there whoever he is we want to take a picture of your costume so 
it was rather funny. I I guess they just must not have realized who he was. Uh, it was kind of funny. They shooed the celebrity away to take pictures of us in our, you know, <laughs> our silly amateur costumes. Anyway, um, I think I'm going to stop rambling on about uh, Dragon Con, and, and I'll switch over to uh, working on some of this Legion stuff now. So I'll turn the camera around. You guys can see what I'm doing, and I'll, I'll keep chatting away as we go. All right, so... I'm going to start off with some of the ceramite white here. Uh, well, I'm not really starting. I've already done some work on these guys. I'm just going to be working on the flesh tonight. And some of the fur, I guess. Um, let's use this old junker brush. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I know I said I was going to stop talking about Dragon Con, but... It's pretty much all that's running through my head at the moment, so that's what you guys get to hear about. Um, actually, you know what? I could talk about some of the next projects coming up. I think I may have mentioned some of these before, but I'm just getting geared up, and I think um, the next one that we're going to do is some, uh, by, by popular demand from my inquiry before, um, I'm going to be doing some non-imperial fortifications for 6th edition. And I want to start out with uh, Tyranid defense lines and a Tyranid landing pad. So essentially a Tyranid version of those two specific fortifications. And um, so that should be, that should be fun. I, I'm afraid the Aegis defense line... Uh, the Tyranid versions of the defense lines are going to be really, really easy to do. So, um, we, it'll be a good uh, basic tutorial. I'll spend some time painting it and everything, but um, should not be um, overly complicated. I'd like for them to be simple so that you can duplicate them quickly because you're going to want to have uh, a handful of them for use in the game because I believe according to the rules you can use uh, four long sections and four small sections of the Aegis defense line <clears throat> so that uh, I need to make eight pieces yeah, four large ones and four small ones um, two, okay yeah, I'm going to paint these some of these leather parts I'm going to do in a lighter brown. I'd rather go over white than over black. Just be easier that way. So I think the camera cut out there for a second, but uh, just talking about the Tyranid equivalent Aegis Defense Line stuff. Hopefully that'll be a fun tutorial. I'm I'm thinking that the um, the landing pad is really going to be a much more interesting and in-depth tutorial. I just think the, um, what's it, the Aegis Defense Lines, they'll be cool. I'll come up with some good techniques to use in that, but it's going to be kind of like a bite-sized tutorial here. Good information, but if done right, the tutorial should not be long or hard to follow. Or, uh, well, no tutorial should be hard to follow, but... Um, it shouldn't take long to make those just because they're walls. You don't need to spend a zillion hours working on those, in my opinion. They should be straightforward and simple and easy to, uh, to put together in like an evening. Just be done with them. That's not something that you're going to want to labor over, in my opinion. It's just me. You guys can spend as much time on them as you want. Yeah. For that very reason, I'm going to be doing a second tutorial in the same sort of vein. We'll be using some of the same techniques and we'll sort of expand on those to create our, <clears throat> our uh, landing pad. So I'm not super familiar with Tyranids, or what their flyer is going to be like, the uh, I think it's the Harpy, but uh, I assume that they 
may need some place for it to come and perch from time to time. I guess maybe it just sort of lands on the ground wherever it wants. But, um, yeah. I guess the uh, landing pad in game terms isn't all about actually being some place for it to land as much as it is an elevated platform where you can get cover um, which would be good for some of the Tyranid shooting units get a I don't even know it's good I'm just sort of running off the mouth here but uh, but a I guess a zoanthrope or a, um, one of the vores up there biovore, plasmavore, whatever vores there are um, yeah, one of the guys in my group um, plays Tyranids but um, I have not become 100% accustomed to all of their tricks and names and everything I know some of the basics and I could probably match a model to what each thing is. Like, I know what they look like. I just don't know uh, what each one does and what their tricks are. Oh. Got a little bit too much paint on that part. Oh, come on, get out of there. All right, whatever. I'll go back and fix that in a little bit. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, um, I've been doing a lot of airbrushing stuff recently, and it's kind of become my thing, I guess, uh, here on Mini Wargaming is I'm the guy that uses the airbrush all the time. And uh, I guess I wanted to, to talk to you guys. I mean, I'm talking to the whole mini wargaming community right now because this is going into the completely open section and most of my airbrush related stuff is actually in the vault. So for those of you who are not vault members yet, uh, you you have not seen most likely the uh, any of the airbrush tutorials I've done except I guess the um, the Dread Knight that was some time ago um, and did use the airbrush fairly extensively in that tutorial which was free uh, at the time. I, I believe it still is. I don't think it got moved or anything. But um, I just, I'm, I'm wondering just how helpful they're being. And uh, I'd love to, to have some feedback on these, I, I don't get a whole lot of comments on the actual tutorials. I do get, you know, a few here and there, some questions, or I didn't explain something well enough, and somebody had uh, some doubts about what exactly it was that I was doing in a certain section, or uh, I didn't tell you what products I was using. Um, but uh, do you guys find that that you, I mean, how many of you guys actually have an airbrush and use it? I guess is the first question. Um, is that something you guys do? Uh, are you enjoying the the airbrush content? Is it helpful? I mean, if nobody uses an airbrush, then it's not really all that helpful. But I've gotten enough comments to know that there are airbrush users out there, and they are getting use out of it. It's just, I guess, it's a slightly more niche group um, within the mini wargaming community here, at least the ones that uh, watch the painting and hobby tutorials. So, but yeah, it using an airbrush, like, when I first started, I thought it was a real big hassle. You know, you could get some good effects, but it was a real pain to actually use it, to clean it, to maintain it. Um, and I was a little turned off by it myself. But then when I started, I got to brush my mouth, sorry. Uh, then when I started like really getting down to it and using it like a lot, like every day for everything that I could, um, it was 
I, like I, I just couldn't go back. Like it, it was an unbelievable change, and it sort of happened overnight for me. That like airbrush stuff just sort of clicked for me, and I, I suddenly was like, oh, okay, I get this now. And cleaning wasn't so big a hassle. I guess you just kind of get used to it, you know. It'd be like saying, oh, you mean I got to rinse this brush out every time I use it? That's crazy. But, you know, you do it, and it just becomes part of the routine. And you get pretty quick at it, too. I mean, rinsing out a brush doesn't take very long. Just like washing your airbrush shouldn't take very long. If you've done it a few times, know how to break it down. <clears throat> so, yeah. I find that it saves me so much time because like, so yeah, right now I've got to go in and do all this by hand because um, I really just don't want to mask off all this stuff. It would just take way too long. It's just impractical to do that for this particular model. Um, but uh, doing all the other stuff here for the, the green and getting some slight gradients and getting just basic colors down even on models is so much faster and easier now with an airbrush than I ever could have imagined possible before. It's really quite uh, quite helpful. Probably gonna have to go over that like one more time. Actually, I don't think you guys can really see that from on camera there. But yeah, it's uh, looking a little blotchy blotchy ball all right um so yeah i guess um yeah i'm gonna propose this question i guess to everybody because uh i'd like to know what uh what type of content everybody would like to see uh, that I might do. I mean, the vast majority of my stuff goes into the vault right now, but, you know, if you guys suggest stuff that you really want to see that's like vault level content, uh, and I actually produce it, it, you know, you guys might be enticed into uh, checking out the vault. I promise there's lots of cool stuff, you know, behind those doors. Uh, I know you guys who aren't vault members see it, um, you know, I guess pass by on the the uh, the homepage as things get released, but uh, I guess you know I'm not trying to make turn this into like a big sales pitch for the vault or anything like that. It's not what I'm intending for this to be. This is just me having a chat with each and every one of you guys out there and gals, perhaps uh, that is possible. Um, but. Uh, for, for those of you who are already members of the vault, what would you like to see as far as new terrain and painting tutorials? Uh, I know that I've already asked this once and I haven't produced what I what was the most popular yet, uh, but trust me, it's on the way. Um, the Tyranid defense line and the Tyranid landing pad are in the works. I've designed them. I will start uh, sculpting them just as soon as... Um, just as soon as I get done with this Nurgle piece, which is coming along quite nicely. It's pretty much done on the build part. I just need to um, to paint it now, which should be much quicker because I keep doing steps in the build process that you do this thing, you gotta wait a few hours. Most of the time I end up waiting a whole day to make sure it's completely set before I move on. Um, but, um, you know, if, if, there were, if there was something that would Something you know, terrain-wise, that would just be so cool that it would it would entice you into checking out the or or not not just like a video because I don't I don't want this to sound like oh we're gonna trick you <laughs> in um, I I swear this is not a sales pitch <laughs> it's sounding more and more like it every minute but uh, if there was a type of content maybe I should go that way if there was a type of content that you were consistently seeing in the vault that uh, it would be interesting enough to you to actually say, you know what, that $10 a month is totally worth it now um, to see that type of content. And if, it's, if this is completely in regards to uh, terrain and painting tutorials, because uh, I don't really do battle reports as of right now, um, what, uh, what would it be? Um, 
And if there's nothing, if you just say, you know, no, I'll support you guys by shopping in the store and by, uh, you know, watching your videos and, you know, getting you ad revenue and stuff, you know, that's cool. I totally get it. I'm not trying to say, you know, you guys all need to be vault members, but I do lots of cool things in there and I want everybody to see. So it's partly selfish, I know, but um, I like to show off. I like all my friends here at Mini Wargaming to see my stuff. So, anyway, uh, I'll stop harping on that and I'll get back to painting here. Um, yeah, these guys have been far too long in the works here. And while the uh, rest of this Nurgle terrain is drying at the moment, I'm trying to catch back up on this. My goals for this weekend are to finish the Nurgle terrain piece get all the video edited and wrapped up and the voiceovers done all that good stuff yada 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 and get these guys wrapped up too and hopefully get the Kador stuff well enough underway that early next week I can get all the stuff shipped out and be uh, done with that project I like getting done with projects it's a good feeling I will say that um, most of my normal day job does not give me the uh, satisfaction of closure most of the time it's like my my job kind of uh is ongoing tasks so it always feels like you know whatever you do is temporary and it's just gonna break again and you're gonna have to go fix it again so i really like painting miniatures and doing terrain pieces for you guys because it means i get to finish something so that's just me um all right, almost done with this white base coat. I got the rest of that arm. Goodness gracious. Let me zoom in a little bit. You guys might actually be able to see what I'm doing here. Yeah. Man, I'll tell you what about Dragon Con, though. People do not mess around at Dragon Con. <laughs> I barely got home, and they had already opened up the some of the hotel reservations for next year. And, like, hotels were selling out in, like, minutes. So I had to go ahead and jump on it. Um, for those of you guys um, interested in science fiction and fantasy, um, like TV and movies and stuff, I totally recommend doing that. And if you do uh, end up wanting to go next year, um, I'm going to be there again, and maybe I will see you there. Shoot me a message or something. Well, I think I'm going to finish this one off real quick. But uh, I guess I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> if I could talk. Thanks for hanging out with me while I paint. And I will catch you in the next vlog or uh, tutorial, whichever one comes out first. Until then, happy wargaming.